Today on Nerd Out, Dual Leaders. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're going to talk about the concept of dual leaders. So let's get into it. So how did we? How did I get on this path? Well, I, I had a number of reports from other stake pool operators that they were reporting higher than normal orphan counts for their blocks. That's where your block is not accepted onto the blockchain. So I I went spelunking in my CNCLI database because CNCLI hangs on to every block that it sees, whether or not that's included in the chain or not. And so I created this um, tweet and a nice little CNCLI query. So you can look at your CNCLI database and determine whether or not there are any pools that are making multiple blocks per slot. Now if we dig into the the SQL here, um, we're selecting slot number where um, where the VRF keys match, the hashes don't match, and the slot number is the same. So we're looking at the same table twice, we're querying twice, and then we're gonna, out of those slots, we're just gonna dump all of the slot number, block number, hash, and pool ID so we can kind of look and see what these dual leaders look like. So this first one here is in slot 47585446. Um, they both produced a block. The hash numbers did not match, but it was the same pool producing the block. So the only way to, to have come into this situation is for that pool to have uh, be running two block producers with the same set of keys at the same time. And so I went down this path a little further and we want to talk a little bit about like what exactly is dual leader. So as I mentioned in the previous page, it's where we have the Carnado network here. We have, we're running a relay, a block producer, relay block producer. All of the connections currently are half duplex on Cardano. So that means that you have to have both an incoming and an outgoing connection. Uh, well, in particular, you have to have an incoming connection to your block producer in order for that block to get out to the network. So there has to be incoming from your relay to your block producer, and there also has to be an incoming from the Cardano network to your block producer in order for that to get out and spread around the network. So if you're running two block producers, same set of keys, it's very possible when the network is congested that you'll create two different blocks that have a different set of transactions in it. Now, if the network is completely clear and you know it's not congested at all, it's highly likely that these two block producers will produce the exact same block. Um, so what to do about this? So if you want to run dual block producers where one is like a backup to the other, you have to put checks in place to make sure that one of them doesn't get out to the, to the network except in a failover scenario. So this is the, the setup that Blue Cheese Steakhouse runs currently. Um, you know, we have a, a backup relay, backup block producer for all the nodes, and it's continually once per minute running a CNCLI ping check against all of our other relays. And if all the other relays come back as failure, like for example, I run a, um, I run bare metal out of my house with um, fiber optic lines, but if for some reason this cloud relay backup does not see any of my other relays, um, then it will disable a firewall rule, which is this over here. Um, and this, this setup is not something that I pioneered. It was pioneered by uh, Martin Lang from Atata Stake Pool. Um, he's a Cardano ambassador, really clever guy. He came up with this, and I've just kind of repurposed it for my particular setup. Um, so yeah, so normally if I get a valid response back from the relays, I just keep this firewall rule in place. That pre prevents any blocks that this block producer comes up with from making it out to the larger network. Only the blocks produced by the you know, my normal mode, get out to the network. 
if this ping comes back and says, I can't communicate with any of these relays, you know, maybe Andrew lost power in his home or something, then it removes this firewall rule for the incoming connection. And then suddenly these blocks get out to the network in place of these others. Now it's not perfect. There's about a one minute gap between the failover takeover and, you know, turning on and off these. So, you know, in the past, I think I produced one or two forks because of this, but it's, it's kind of the best setup that we have in today's world. So we know that the P2P network is coming online. A lot of us, myself included, are running P2P nodes on the testnet currently. And so this changes because once we get P2P, all of these connections between nodes are full duplex, not half duplex, which means they go both directions. So as long as there's a connection in one way or the other, um, blocks can flow both directions, transactions flow both directions. And so we need a different solution for turning on and off block production. Um, and we've asked IOHK to provide us with some mechanism to be able to make a block producer run in leader mode or just run in regular relay mode where it doesn't produce the blocks. And so the setup will, will change slightly. So instead of turning on and off a firewall rule, we'll have some type of command to talk to this block producer node and just turn off block production itself when we're in normal mode. And then in failover mode, of course, we'll talk to the block producer and say, hey, turn on, start, start doing your leader checks and start producing blocks. So once we release P2P, this is kind of the scenario we'll have to do if you want to run uh, with, with backup block producer nodes. So um, let's talk a little bit about why dual leaders are bad. Why can't you just run two leaders and let it always produce two blocks? So let's run through a scenario. So let's say pool A produces two blocks. It produces block number 321A and 321B. Both of these blocks will be seen by the network and they are both valid. In our um, slot battle video, we talked about how, you know, if they're under the this, this certain limbo bar. So both of these blocks are gonna have the exact same limbo bar value because they have the same keys, uh, the same VRF hash, everything. So they're gonna look the same except for what transactions are contained in these blocks. So the network will try to propagate them both, but usually only the first one arriving at a node is kept. The second one is, is kind of thrown out. So it's, it's particularly bad if these block producers are in different parts of the world. So Half the network is gonna see one block, half the network is gonna see the other block. Um, so then pool B comes along, it's, it's time for it to produce a block. So it produces a block 322 on top of, let's say it sees block 321B and not A. Then the next slot or that we have a producer in is pool C and they never saw a block 321B and they only have 321A. And so they see, you know, 322 arrive at their node. And so they're frantically asking its peers saying, I need this other block because I don't, I don't have it. And so maybe it can't find it in time to build on top of 322. So instead, it'll build another competing 322 block on top of 321A. And then this kind of continues until we get to a scenario where one of the chains eventually becomes longer and wins out. Um, and so either pool B or pool C, one of their block blocks has to be thrown out. And that, that's when um, it becomes an orphan block. So pool A has in a sense caused uh, either pool B or pool C's block to become orphan because they were running in this um, dual leaders mode. Now note that for pool A, there's no disadvantage right now on the network for doing this. There's an open GitHub pull request to say we need to punish running dual leaders. Um, nothing has come of that so far. So right now, all we have is so social pressure to make sure that people aren't running dual leaders. But uh, with CNCLI, it's one way that you can check to see, you know, are there any dual leaders running. And if you see one or two dual leaders from a given pool, that's not a big deal. It's when you see it time and time and time again that they're just, um, you know, always running dual leaders and, and just kind of doing a, 
a lazy failover scenario where they only care about their own block production and not the overall health of the network. So um, how bad is this? In many cases, the network is not under load and dual leaders are kind of rare. You know, the two nodes oftentimes will produce an identical block. This causes no problems for the network. Um, once the network is congested, which we're starting to see with things like, you know, Hoskies and in the new year, we're gonna see drip drops that'll li likely cause some congestion. We're gonna start to see more and more DEXs come online with uh, Sunday Swap is coming up. Uh, at some point, probably in the new year, it will be very likely that if you're running dual leaders, you will produce forks. Um, that's just the nature of the network. So what can be done about this? Um, I would recommend if you're not like really skilled with firewalls and stuff to just run, just turn off your backups, run single leader mode, um, and trust the infrastructure that you're using is good with high uptimes. Um, so that's kind of the simplest one is this third bullet point. Um, you could run single leaders um, until we have P2P, and then it's easier to turn on and off block production for a node. Um, if IOHK provides us with that switch where we can trigger block production on and off to a running node, maybe it'll be something like sending a, a HUP signal to the process or, or something to reload some some configuration um, on the fly that would be ideal um, or you can if you know what you're doing with firewalls you can set up a more advanced failover system with these uh, firewall rules to block incoming connections to the block producer when it's in normal mode and not in failover mode so you you could do this um, if you absolutely want to do this failover scenario stuff today um, let's talk about other causes. So dual leaders is one thing that's happening on the network. Another thing we've been seeing recently is slow block propagation times. So we have the rewards calculation starts at some point during an epoch and then it'll finish at some point. And during this, because of the way, you know, the Haskell code is, is built, the checking um, or the, the propagating of the block seems to be delayed. And you can see that here during this epoch, my block propagation times have gone up to over two seconds in some cases. Many times, you know, one and a half seconds is kind of the average during this rewards calculation period. Now, normally, that's fine. You know, the, the network can sustain up to five second delays and still everything will still be okay. The world won't end. But if you have a block that is one second, every, there's a slot every second. So if your block happens to be one second after somebody else's, and we're in this scenario here, it's very natural, even if people aren't running dual leaders, for there to be a whole lot more forks. And as we saw earlier, when there are forks, there will be orphans. And there will be uh, stake pool operators crying about it because that's lost revenue for their stake pool business. Um, P2P should improve block propagation times, but I think uh, what really needs to happen is this, this uh, rewards calculation bug needs to be kind of decoupled from the leadership checks that we're doing. Somehow it's, it's connected to the, the leadership checks and, and slowing down block propagation times. So we need to fix the bug in the code that where this is happening in order to improve this. Um, that's all I've got for today. Hope this was informative. Um, let's try to be nice to people if you find out their pool is doing this. You know, maybe they just don't know. That's, that's very possible. And uh, let's all help each other get very robust nodes and pools on the Cardano ecosystem. With that, nerd out.